Okay, now I have three quarters of my hair done. Hello, you get to see me. Well, what I do with that uh, knife is I actually apply my henna using that knife because the knife allows me to get into the parts. So my hair has been sectioned into four braids. I have a really good copper color and mine is very intense because my purpose of using the henna on my hair is twofold. I uh, enjoy covering my gray <laughs> and I also it relaxes the texture of my hair without a chemical. So I section it and generally, uh, since I wear glasses, I use a uh, magnifying mirror. Ladies, get a magnifying mirror. It helps with your makeup. Uh, you can really see uh, how to apply it really well. A lighted one is good. If you have a really good light when you're using your uh, magnifying mirror in your uh, vanity area, then that's fine. If you don't, you should have a, a, a lighted one. And um, I just take the knife, smear it right close to the parts because that's important whether you're covering your hair because of the gray or you're trying to get texture, add a nice softer texture to your hair wavy, curly, you want to um, improve the elasticity from the roots to the ends. And also, if you're caught in a quagmire like I am right now, my supplier is out of my color, henna, which is this copper, and I can't live without it. I just love my copper. My uh, skin tone has... Uh, orange undertones in it complements my complexion so much that that's the color I I love the most. I've been doing henna since the 70s. We have big afros and I work at a large conglomerate that serviced a lot of models and the models had to have their hair colored so that when you show on print that line of demarcation does not appear and uh, look like you had something artificial. So the depth of the color was good and the conditioning and shine was also a benefit. We use neutral a lot. Uh, neutral allows you to uh, just have a, it imparts a beautiful shine. So once I get that in, what I generally do is I go back and I smooth it in really good. And then I section my hair the opposite way. So I go crossways. And I smooth it in again and make sure that I have it on my roots. Absolutely on my roots. And if I don't, I apply a little bit more. And this plastic knife works wonders because it has a smooth edge. And you can put it right in the part and smooth it in there. And even though I have gloves, I'm wearing a real light glove and I can feel it. And I cross over the opposite way and I fill in any gaps that I may have missed. And I make sure that it's absolutely down on my scalp. And now that I've got my henna on my scalp, I'm so happy. I love the aloe vera juice because 
it uh, not only the citric acid in the uh, 99% aloe vera juice does it enhance the henna application. It allows it not to fade. When you use water, your henna will fade. It'll, it'll be vibrant, but it won't stay vibrant. Henna is supposed to work, as I mentioned, over a four-day period. So I'm putting it on today, and within four days, it'll be even more vibrant. I'll come back and show you after my hair is styled. It's uh, close to the holidays, and I want to look beautiful. I have a lot of parties to go to, and um, I want my hair on point because I will be passing out my cards. A lot of people are going to be doing the big chop for the new year and wanting to transition into natural hair care. And that's my specialty. 98% of my clientele gets their hair done naturally with, relax, with uh, non-relaxed hair. And my relaxed clients actually are men. <laughs> and uh, the ladies, though, we're, we're all natural. And they some of them wear um, a silky press. And the rest of them wear all kind of natural hair styles. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my hands. And I'm applying it to the rest of my hair that hasn't been smothered yet <laughs> in the henna. The roots are smothered. <laughs> now I'm applying it to the rest of my hair. I love it. My The back of my hair is coarser and it seems like the henna doesn't really uh, soften it like the front. The front is already pretty soft, but the back, since it's a little more coarse, I try to make sure I really get it on there. If I run out of henna, where I don't want to run out is on my roots and in the back. So if you ever come to a point where you have your favorite henna, but your supplier has run out <laughs> like mine did, then what you want to do is carefully take that knife and smear just a little bit on there. I go around the edge of the bowl and I put a small amount on there and I get in those parts and I put it in there. I start around my hairline where my gray is more prominent and I uh, Make sure that I smooth it around there because you don't really want it on your skin either. It'll color your skin. So once you put it on there, you can move it around back into the hairline with this knife. These plastic knives work really good for applying in a, And it uh, works well because what ends up happening is when you use your hands a lot, you miss spots. So that way you can get right down on that part, especially doing it yourself. Now, when I'm doing my clients, I don't use the plastic knife. I mean, for me, that would be unprofessional. But I'm doing my own hair. And I'm showing you ladies how you can do it at home if need be. Because this is an expensive process and it's worth it. It takes several hours. And I got to get paid. But... uh. For myself, when I put my henna on, I have to be able to apply it, and this time, sparingly. So I made sure that my knife would lay into the part. I section it, I apply that henna on here, and I smear it on there, smooth it, and any excess, I pick it up. And I turn the knife over and I smooth it into that part. And then I go back with the straight edge and I smooth it in there. And I get it really, 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 
really, really on my roots because that's important. That's what makes the depth of my henna look beautiful because since my hair is salt and pepper, then when the vibrancy appears after the application, four days later, and on and on, not only is my texture uh, manageable, the elasticity is wonderful, but my color, it looks so nice because it looks like I have streaks. On the dark hair, it, it lightens it in a way that is transparent almost. Well, I've been doing henna so long on my hair that it's my hair is pretty much, even the two-tone is vibrant on my dark hair, but it especially has a really, really, really good uh, uh, dichotomy on the uh, light and darkness. So you'll see it's really, really vibrant where it's lightest. I love it. It's beautiful. I get so many compliments on my color because of that. And so everybody's hair isn't going to come out, you know, looking like that. But if you have gray hair and you like color and you don't ever want to go back to your gray, then this is a good option for you. You can do it in black. You can do it in brown. Myself, like I say, with my orange undertones, I like the copper. So now my hair is saturated and thoroughly, thoroughly. covered with my henna application and that was a total for me of about 200 grams or maybe a little bit more so my uh, jar is a 10 ounce jar and this time it filled up for about eight eight and a half ounces so uh, 100 grams is a little over three and a half ounces so seven or so ounces is what I put on my hair today and uh, it's pretty covered I'm happy show you the back the sides the top Woo! I feel like I'm doing the matrix <laughs> So anyway, now what I do is I sit up under the heat cap, old school hairdresser here. And um, first I put my plastic cap on like that, cock that to the side, red. <laughs> oh boy, too funny. Now my heat cap. It has a little gadget here that allows you to place it on low, medium, and high. This is old school. And the cap fits on my head. If you take care of your stuff good or your grandma still has one, borrow it. You place it on, you take your strap, snap it on, <laughs> this is some grandma stuff here, but it works. And um, this way you don't have to worry about trying to put hot water in your henna. It's a good way to relax. My clients love it. I use this for hot oil treatments, I use it for henna treatments, and I have a couple of these. So they really come in handy. And um, another way you can do it uh, is you can steam it in. You know, you can steam your henna. You can put your uh, steamer on low, and you can sit under the steamer and enjoy your couple of hours. That's a long time to sit up under the steamer. I enjoy sitting under my heat cap. I can read. I can play on the computer. I can unsnap it and come out of it if it gets too hot. I can adjust my temperature 
between medium 